All right, guys, we are just hours away from having a 100% totality eclipse here on the East Coast of the United States. And I thought I'd like to try to pick this lock from Jillian. She calls this the Rush Rees Challenge because it's my theory that the eclipse is going to initiate the zombie plague. And I might be one of them, so I thought it'd be better to pick it before that happens. All right, in looking at this... Um, if you take a look at the bottom, a couple of odd things. I like to look at locks before I try to pick them. I mean, you can see some security pins in there, but this has been picked on for quite a while. Not by me, but apparently by Jillian. So you got that wear on the bottom there. The other thing I notice is that uh, Jillian has probably removed this, this uh, little plate here to access the pins. And there's further proof right there. Looks like she has filed that for some reason. We'll figure it out a little bit later. And the last thing that little bit odd is there's a washer here that looks like it was it's not like a regular washer it looks like it was broken out of a piece of cast metal or something I think it's probably just for a spacer maybe the core has been monkeyed with a little bit it's just my theory but uh, we do have a key for this thing and there you go it is the Yale and she says it's the T A keyway and to me that means pretty wide open and we're going to take advantage of that. I'm still going to probably use some of my thinner picks. There's a little bit of warding on both sides, but I believe we can get either 15 or 13 thousandths up between those. So I can work from the bottom. So I'll be trying to put on a top of the keyway. Let's quit talking and start doing it. All right, I hope I don't miss this uh, eclipse. hope it's not cloudy because the next one's not for like 60 years, and I doubt... Too many of us are going to be around for that one. All right, let's top the keyway. That's a little bit too thick. So the red one, go to the white one, is the middle thickness, and that's way floppy. All right, I can use a 36 thousandths. The red one is 44 thousandths, but you saw it won't fit. And I don't have anything in between, so just got to make do. Um, I am going to go ahead and start out with a 13th, 13 thousandth, because it slides right in there without too much trouble. I could probably use a 15th. There's enough flop in there, but why? All right, all the way in. I'm going to use start out with heavy tension and see if I can just quickly identify the very first binder. Ringy, ringy. All right, so you feel like the last one, pin five. All right, I got a little click on five. I felt that through the tension wrench. Now I'm going to lighten up on my tension because Jillian probably did do some threading here. Looking for another binder. This is like pin two. Got a little click on that. That was pin one, and I got a little bit of a false set. And now, I'm going to say that's counter-rotation, but I think I'm rubbing up on the keyway there. All right, let's find out. Okay, there is nice counter-rotation. Well, it was. Where'd it go? Okay, that was four. Tiny little click. No turn. Oh, there we go. Pin two again, a little turn on the core. And now I am getting counter-rotation. It's like counter rotation Okay, that was two, little counter rotation, and now it's deeper fault set. So now I got a good fault set. I'm looking for any kind of feedback to tell me who's next. I think one is set. I get nothing. Okay, I'm on pin 5. There's a little counter rotation there. Give me counter rotation, but really solidly set. So I'm going to have to put some pretty spectacular. There we go. Spectacular pressure on him. Okay, counter rotation on 3 again. Nice solid click, but I'm still getting that. There we go. Still getting counter rotation on three. So we got multiple spool elements on a couple of these pins. Let's see what Jillian's come up with and find out the reason for that spacer. Uh, 
Thank goodness it wasn't another one of Raymond's creations with that sleeve in it. Man, that took me forever. All right, um, I'm going to lock it up. I do have a key. Let's see what the key looks like. Ah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I should know better than to try to unwrap it. I'll just cut it. Oh my god. Jillian, did you go crazy with a file or what? My goodness. All right, let's see if it works. Come on, get in there. We know the lock works. It's just a question of... Let me push on that tail. There we go. I had to push on the tailpiece. So apparently we got a, oops, got a little spacing problem. Let me try to pull it out and see what happens. All right, got a little spacing problem. You can feel, see the core kind of jiggling back and forth. So if you push forward on the core, I guess that perfectly aligns things for this obscene level of cut on this key. It does work. Well, I should have just left it in. Well, let's undo the back first, and then we'll get on with it. tray up here. Put it right there. Put it right there. I think this thing's just been beaten on to flatten him out. It looks like some stuff is definitely broken off of the edge. So this little washer's you got your money's worth out of him, Jillian. All right, now let's try to get that key back in without pushing the core all the way out. It'd be a little tricky. Get in there. Come on. There we go. All right, I'm not going to monkey with that too much more. Um, split. I'll use this guy. Maybe not. Maybe I'll use this guy. More like it. All right, number two and number five look like they're flopping around in there quite a bit. Oh, where did he go? Here he is. All right, we had an ASA driver pin as a key pin. That was odd. And I think that came out of three. Let's just double check. I really hate to stick this key back in there, but I really want to know where he came from. Yeah, so that was out of chamber three, but it looks like there's still a key pin in there. So the driver pin is probably being used as a spacer. All right. So, okay, we got a key pin and another ASA driver pin in one. Two, we just have a normal standard pin. Three, we already got one ASA out of, and so we have one key pin. Number four, standard. And number five, we have two, pin, two pins in there. Um, we've got a lot of action on the core here. Let's set them aside for just a second. Grab those tweezers and sort these guys out, because there's something odd about... This is the tiniest spool I think I have ever seen, and it looks like a commercial one. So he was in five. All right, let's take a look here. We have a lot of undercutting. Every single chamber looks like it's got some degree of countermilling or undercutting. And of course that is to snag those assets. Uh, it's undercut in two, but it, at least uh, in the core, there's only a standard pin. So I would bet in the uh, Bible we're going to find another assa pin that's designed to snag into that. Every single one of these really good quality undercut. Nice and deep on every one of them. All the way around both sides. Nicely done. Alright, let's see what we got in here. Alright, there is a spool. And it's an ASA commercial 
spool. And there is our assa for number two. Number three, we have the first normal looking pin, a normal spool in three. So we had actually an assa pin and a spool stacked one on top of the other in chamber three. Chamber four, let's go ahead and slide them around and start from the rear. Get a little bit better look as they pop up. That way if I let one flies out, I will have caught how he was oriented. I got another standard spool, number five. So we had a tiny spool and a large spool stacked on top of each other. And on the last one, we have a homemade spool, multiple spool. So that's the multiple spool and multiple sets that we got off of chamber four. Uh, Spring-wise, I'd be willing to bet these are different. So there's a standard copper one. Uh, okay, let's start from the other end because four didn't want to give up and I don't want to be beaten on stuff if I don't have to. May have to. All right, there is definitely a spring in there. I can see it way down the bottom. It is a double, doubled up spring in chamber one. And number two, standard, regular brass or copper spring. Three, standard copper spring. And four is the one that was not cooperating. Peter block over here and there he is just a little steel spring so we had varying degrees of tension in here I uh, let's see what we got here we got some threading in the top chamber one is threaded two is threaded every single chamber is threaded all designed to catch these sharp edges of these acid pins or homemade uh, serrated pin or spool pins so pretty nasty um, here's what we got guys this is quite a step up from some of Jillian's previous uh, uh, attempts, particularly when you try to incorporate these ashes. These are really nasty pins to try to pick, particularly in high tolerance locks. I think, fortunately for me, this is not a high tolerance lock. So there's enough flop in there. I was able to get some feedback off of these guys. And a, and a tight tolerance lock, that probably would not be possible. I'd still be fighting this thing. This is the other one, a tiny little spool here. I have never seen spools stacked one on top of each other. This was actually used as a master wafer. So I think in some of these cases, this gives me multiple shear lines to work with. For example, in number three, I'd picked all of these to the upper chamber except number three, and I had trapped, oh, he was up there too, and I had actually trapped this ASA pin in the core. So kind of unusual, but it did give me an extra shear line to work with on one, two, on three of the cylinders to kind of double my chances, increase my odds of getting a successful pick. Anyway, there you go. Jillian's Rush Rees Challenge. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe, stay legal. Jillian, thanks for the lock.